Welcome back to episode 3 of The Heap, where we look at one of my old machines in my collection, evaluate it, run some benchmarks, and generally show it off. Today we're doing something different. We're not reviewing another beige Windows 98 box. No, we're reviewing something totally different. We are reviewing this. This is my Tangerine iBook G3. Equipped with a 300 megahertz power PC G3 processor 128 megabytes of RAM a 6 gigabyte IDE hard drive and An ATI RAID mobility though some of the extensions that are loaded say it's also a 128 So it's probably based on that With 4 megabytes of VRAM. I bought it from a friend. I probably paid way too much for it But it was a local purchase so I knew and it would work and stuff, so I don't particularly care. And currently it runs Mac OS 9.2.1. So, let's take a look at the machine. As you can see, here is the Apple logo. It is missing the leaf, but nobody cares about that. On the back, you got this nice carry handle, which I would not trust in the year 2023 because it's made out of plastic and it will probably break. You got this nice orange trim on the bottom of the lid and then if we flip it over this is where the battery door is if you just undo these two screws then the battery is right there which is completely dead i have yet to replace it but yeah on this side we have a cd-rom drive this is the charging port and we have a modem ethernet usb and a speaker port Let's go ahead and open it up. Ah. This is the touchpad with the one big clicky button. There is a there is a speaker right here. This is your keyboard. There's your power button. If we move the camera up a little bit more, you can see there is a bit of a crack right there, but other than that, the screen is perfectly fine. It says iBook on the top. And with this iBook, I even got the original charger. So unfortunately the footage corrupted for this segment, so I'm just gonna put some pictures on the screen and describe what the original charger is. It's called by fans as the yo-yo charger because the cord is wrapped around the charger block base thing and you can unspool it to get more length out of it. And then you plug it into a wall with a little three prong thing on the bottom. It's shaped like a hockey puck, and you so you connect it to the bigger hockey puck, and that's how you get your charger power. Now, unlike previous episodes, I will not be opening this machine, because I will break it if I open it, because it's 90s brittle plastic, and everybody knows if you try and open 90s brittle plastic, it will just disintegrate. So, we're gonna just leave it alone, and then move on to the boot-up procedure and then the benchmarks. So, let's get right to it. And now for the benchmarking portion of this video. Because we're not running on Windows, unfortunately, 3D Mark will have to be excluded from the test. But that means we have two of our normal tests that are featured on this channel, Quake 3 and Unreal Tournament 1999. 
along with two new tests not seen before, Quake 1 and Cinebench 2000. These tests will be used to judge the performance of the iBook G3 and will also probably be used to judge any future Macs I decide to throw at it, assuming they run PowerPC code. We'll start with the most disappointing game in this series of benchmarks, Quake 3. Although it installs fine, all the files are present and there's no errors, you can try and launch the game, it'll bring up the Quake 3 boot up console, it'll show all the stuff it's loading, it'll sit there for a little bit, it'll flicker the screen like it's trying to enter full screen mode, but the moment it does, and the moment it's finished loading, you'll get stuck at an orange screen where the game will just hang, and it will hang the entire computer too. No amount of keyboard mashing will get you out of this orange screen of death, which means unfortunately, the Mac gets a fail on the very first test, the Quake 3 test. Let's hope it performs better in the other tests we are performing today. The next game up in this benchmark list is UT99. We are using the Rave driver at 640 by 480 on low. We get an average of anywhere between 16 to 21 FPS. It's very playable, but has pretty severe frame drops, dropping below 11 when there's a lot going on. The details are also kind of hard to make out, and partially because the graphic settings are set too low, but also because the resolution is so low that it also compresses the text and just makes all the textures pretty hard to notice. But in general, this is a pretty decent way to play the game if you don't have another way to play it, or you just really want to play it on a Macintosh for some reason. Next up is the original Quake 1, and honestly, there's not a lot to say about it. We're running at 640 by 480 although it's in a much smaller window than the full screen you'd expect from it, with the brightness all the way up, although I genuinely don't think that makes a difference, and Quake 3 runs flawlessly using the hardware-rendered rave mode. There's not a whole lot to say about it. It runs at a smooth, I want to say, 60 FPS. Very playable. You just have to get used to the archaic controls, but very enjoyable to play on an iBook G3. Did you know Cinebench is at least 20 years old? I sure didn't before I found this benchmark. This is Cinebench 2000, and it's old enough to run on classic Mac OS. Now, we've ran all the tests that were available to run on this iBook G3, and the results are interesting. We got a 2.99 CB score in Shading Cinema 4D, 2.87 CB Shading in OpenGL mode, and 3.55 CB in Ray Tracing. Now, I'm going to be the first to admit, I don't really understand what these numbers or scores mean, and how they compare to other things, but hopefully, when we take a look at the other classic Mac I own, we'll be able to compare the scores between the two, and determine how much worse this iBook is to that. But for now, these scores should let you get a rough estimate of what to expect if you understand what the Cinebench scores mean. You rejoin me after the benchmark section of this video. I apologize for the lack of benchmarks, but I, I still don't know why Quake 3 didn't work. It just boots to a yellow screen and crashes. But I threw in an older game, and then I threw in Cinebench 2000, which should cover all of the benchmarking needs for this. Anyway, this was the first of two classic Mac reviews I'm going to be doing. I have one more of these. I'll throw it in eventually, but not right away after this, or else I'll run out of classic Mac content to to balance out the array, or balance out the lineup of just covering beige box after beige box after beige box after beige box, because there's a lot of them. I only did two of them. I have at least four more Windows 98 computers to cover, and they're all be relatively similar. Ah, jeez. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, more will come eventually. I have to go back to school soon, so... Who knows when stuff will get made, but I'll see you in the next video.